Hi, I'm John Montgomery, and welcome to this special video on Hashtag Chod Eats. Chod's letting me put this video on his channel. I don't do a lot of videos, and uh, this is only my second unboxing video, but I thought a lot of people in this group might find this interesting. I started with smoking just last year, and I'm no kind of expert about it. Um, you know, all I've got is my Weber kettle, and I thought I needed some other smoker until I watched a few YouTube videos, like, you know, most people do. You go to YouTube University, and I discovered that a lot of people do some great meat smoking on just their old Weber kettle. And I've had this one for over 20 years now, and uh, I thought I was going to get a pellet smoker or something like that until I saw something this company was offering. Spider Grills. Um, if you get all those advertisements in your Facebook news feed, uh, you probably get all the different pellet companies, pellet smokers, and uh, I happen to start getting these ones from Spider Grills. They made a pellet feeder smoker that you could put on the side of your uh, Weber kettle. And I went to their page last year and saw that they had this in the works. And uh, it finally became available, and uh, I went ahead and bought one. And it's probably one of the first ones in the state, so I thought, you know what, why don't I do an unboxing and uh, show everybody in the audience. Before we go any further though, take a moment, if you haven't done it, to hit that subscribe button down there just below the screen. Hit the subscribe button and then hit that bell right next to it so you can get notifications anytime a new video comes up here on the hashtag Chod Eats. Uh, it's good for the channel. Uh, the more people we can get, more subscribers, the better the channel will do. I think right now there's about 850. Hopefully with this video we can get a little bit closer to 1,000 because good things happen after 1,000. So, without further ado, let's open this up. All right. I think this shipped from Illinois. Uh, it took maybe two days to get here. Actually, it took three. It got delayed for some reason in Columbus. Got some nice styrofoam packing. Comes with uh, a little screwdriver. Now, I'm not going to show how to actually put it on the grill because Spider Grills already has one on their YouTube channel that goes into depth about how to put it on there. So I'm not going to do that. I'll show you when I've got it installed and I'll let you know if I had any problems doing it. But here's the uh, ash can goes on the bottom. Looks like we've got an owner's manual. Let's take a look here. Yep. Lots of instructions. I'm just going to set that aside. All right, so here's the heart of it. I'll just take it out of the bag now. So this is the controller. And it's got a little fan on it, I think, and it uh, helps control the heat. It's got a digital display readout here. It'll show you what the uh, grill temp is and it's got different probes here for uh, showing what the uh, meat temp is. And then it all goes to an app that I've already downloaded to my phone. So I don't have to come out here and keep checking the temp. I can just stay inside and check my phone and see what the temp is on it. So that's pretty cool. And that was another reason why I did decide to up upgrade like this. Um, it's just a lot of effort to try to keep the temp where it's supposed to be on one of these Webers. You have to really become an expert at operating the upper and lower vents, keeping the coals just right. Uh, so I thought it'd be nice to have something a little bit more automated to do it. And at the time that I purchased this, it was $200. And there's some really expensive meat thermometers that can, you know, come over $100. So I thought for $200, this seemed like a pretty good solution. So what else? Okay, and down here in the bottom, we've got the uh, low power supply and then the temperature probes. Now I had heard something about a battery adapter for these, but if you were gonna take your kettle out to, I don't, maybe you were gonna do some tailgating with it, it'd be nice to have this battery operated, unless you've got a little generator with you. 
I plan to take it camping and uh, my trailer's got uh, an outlet on the outside. I'll probably, I think I'll have enough power to run this. It's probably not a big draw. Early tomorrow morning, I'm gonna put a brisket on and uh, hopefully that'll be done. We've got some guests coming over in the evening and, uh, and I think I'd pick the coldest, windiest weekend in March to do this. So I'll see you in a bit. Well, this is covered in Spider Grills' video on how to install this, but here I've got the Weber upside down. I had to do that to put the smoker controller in place. It's pretty straightforward. There's a hard mounted tab here, and then there's a couple of spring loaded tabs for the other legs. So it's just a matter of putting this one in first and then popping these two into place. It takes a little bit of effort because there's this ring, this fiberglass ring that seals everything and you gotta compress that, but it's not too bad. And then finally, finally you've got this little latch here that you put on the sweeper arm. So you still have your sweeper arm so you can sweep coals down into the bucket. All right, I've got it plugged in. I've got the kettle's temperature probe plugged in. See, it's got P and then there's room for two more probes. The kit comes with one meat probe, and I guess you can buy another one. So it's got some cool features. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Neat. That's pretty cool. Okay, and 52 degrees is the ambient temperature in the kettle, I guess. Um, if we come over here, we've got a graph. So you can check uh, progress. Now this tells you to close the vent over on the side here and then you can come and set the temp. This works in five degree increments and that's pretty nice. You know I guess there's some si systems out there where you know you got to go 15 or 25 degree increments but this does in five. So you just set the target temp over here and I think for the uh, for what I'm going to be doing for my brisket, so I'm probably going to put it at 275, maybe 280, and just uh, hopefully it can hover around that temperature. But uh, that's going to be early tomorrow morning, and we'll take care of it then. Hey, I almost forgot. You got to put the ash can on there, and that's pretty simple. It just has a catch there, and then over here on the other side, it's got that latch. Pretty straightforward. Okay, it's o dark 30 and I came out here to get the Weber going and what you know, <clears throat> it's snowing out here. Okay, you can't see them <clears throat> until now. I've got my coals arranged here and I'm going to start here on this end to get this going. You see the temp goes up pretty quick once the coals start to get going. Once it gets up to operating temperature, I'll uh, put the brisket on and we'll program the controller here and hopefully everything works after that. So I set a target temp of 280 for the kettle and you can hear the fan. It's forcing air into the kettle to uh, work as a bellows and get those coals heating up faster, get the kettle warmed up faster. All right, the temp looks low because I've got the lid off at the moment, but I've got the brisket on, barely fits on there. For reference, that's about a 10-pound brisket. I know they put 13-pound briskets on here, but this is kind of stretching it. Um, got the probe in, and I'm going to put the lid back on here so it can get back up to temp. So, one of the things I learned this morning is that it was taking a while to get up to temp. Uh, I started the coals on the one end, like you saw. Went back and looked at the instructions. They actually want... A bed of coals going. Now you can do an offset 
but those coals should be lit. Uh, when that fan kicked down, it really spread the fire to the rest of the coals. So it might mean going through extra coals, but if I can have a more consistent, regular heat going, that's fine by me. Coals don't cost that much. Um, anyway, we'll get that temp for that probe set at 200 degrees internal, but I'm sure that's going to be a couple hours off before we get there. Okay, I've learned a lot about this device here in the last uh, few hours. Uh, I'll share those lessons a little later, but uh, we've been at the temp here for about 45 minutes. This has this uh, graph on it that'll show you over time what your temperature has been doing. The white line is the kettle temp, the red line is the internal meat temp. And you can see I had a lot of problems here trying to get up to this temp. But see how I've got this solid line right here? Well, that's when I figured out that you can't use the briquette basket. You have to put the grills right on the grate. You can still do an offset, but it needs the airflow coming off the grill, coming off the uh, uh, charcoal uh, grate. So you can't use a basket, but other than that, it works great. It got up to temp and pretty much stayed there. Uh, I think I put in 285 and it's been hovering around 279. So, and if you push the meter here, that shows you the grill temp. That shows you the meat temp. If I had a second probe, I'm sure it would cycle to that too. Anyway, we're up to 163. So I'm going to be taking the brisket off here and uh, I'm going to be wrapping it in foil, putting a little mix on there of uh, some applesauce and water, and then we'll put it back on to finish the cook. I'm basically following cooking with rye uh, process for doing the brisket. So anyway, I'll take it off, wrap it up and put it back on. Okay, so we're back in business here. Got it foil wrapped. There's a few layers of foil in there trying to hold the uh, apple juice and water in there. And you see the hot embers there. The fan from the Venom is uh, keeping those embers stoked. Got Robbie Robinson here. He's come over to uh, have some of this brisket tonight. So it's in the case there. Take a whiff of that. Get down there. Get your nose down there and take a whiff. Oh my gosh. Oh, Chad, you're missing it. Mm. Oh. 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 It's great. It smells great. Delicious. All right. So uh, I only know about how to cut this thing up from what I saw in YouTube videos, but this area over here should be the flat. This should be the point. There's some extra stuff here I probably should have trimmed off, but oh well. It looks good, it smells good, and it passed the initial taste test. So I think we want to cut through here. And then uh, I think we got a point here. We'll just separate all this. Just find all the fat lines in there and cut it apart. But uh, that looks good, but this is the flat. So we're gonna cut across here and see if we got a smoke ring. It's a little tough. Oh, look at that, it's got a ring right there. Some ring. Ooh, and some juice there too. All right. And for anybody who cares, I did wash my hands. No, I'm not wearing I'm not wearing gloves, but I did wash my hands. So here's a nice, uh, pretty good thick cut. And look at that. I think that passes the test. I think that's what we're looking for. <laughs> oh, and let's do another one. The pull apart test. Okay, a little bit of, whoop, snapped right in <laughs> half. So that's yeah, not bad.
Well, so there you have it. That's my review of the Spider Grills Venom Smoker Controller for the Weber Kettle. Uh, I should say that is, I believe, specifically for the 22 inch. There's different sizes, different styles. I did send a picture to the company of uh, my setup here just to verify that it would work and they said yeah it will and it did. Uh, I should also mention that this video is unsponsored. I paid my 200 bucks, got my, uh, got my controller and it only took uh, three days shipping. Um, bought the brisket from TC Markets in Thornport and uh, it was a great cut of meat. Didn't have a lot of fat cap on it but that's okay, it didn't seem to be a problem. Uh, it was really tasty, everybody liked it and we're going to enjoy some leftovers here later on. As far as the controller goes, yeah, I highly recommend it. Uh, I thought it was great um, once I figured out how to use it. You can't really use the uh, standard issue Weber coal baskets with it. It seems to need a lot more airflow than that. According to some comments they made on one of their videos on YouTube, you could use something like a slow and sear basket that might have better ventilation underneath it. But I had, I had a lot of problems controlling temperature early on. It just wouldn't get uh, up to uh, heat after the first time I heated it up. And I think what happened was after that first round of coals burned down, it created kind of an ash bed there that the air couldn't really circulate through. That and I had a water trough next to it. Um, I thought maybe it's too cold. It was like just below freezing and snowing. Uh, so I moved it into my carport, I kind of put a blanket over it. That wasn't working and I finally said, you know what, <laughs> let's just watch some videos. Let's look at the instructions. And from that I kind of figured out, I had to ditch the basket. I just dumped the coals out to do an indirect so the coals were on the side of the kettle. And uh, once I did that, temperature zoomed right up to where it needed to be and stayed there until I needed to add some coals. If if there's any hit against this system, I'm not sure it really is a hit, is you probably have to use some more coal than you normally would because you're doing a sort of a force feeding of air. And if you're going to force some more in, air into it, you're going to burn up the fuel a little bit faster. It's not that big a deal. Uh, and if I had done it right from the beginning, I probably wouldn't have gone through as much. So, uh, yeah, you know, it was a it was a failure to read instructions, but we recovered from it. Uh, overall, I think uh, I had the meat on there for around seven hours, rested for about three and a half, and everything turned out fine. I'm by no means a smoking expert, uh, but I thought this would be great to uh, just make it a little bit easier. And once you learn a few tricks, I think it is. So I'm really looking forward to using it again. The app works great. Uh, where my kettle is, doesn't have the greatest Wi-Fi signal so I did have to occasionally reconnect and if you are using it and you're looking at your app and you see the temperature hasn't fluctuated at all you should just go in and disconnect and reconnect it's real simple it's just a couple of buttons in the app and uh, yeah you'll you'll be back in the game because uh, you really have to know what your temp is you got to follow that I would say once it got up into the operating range it stayed pretty good about being within five degrees of the target. So anyway, that's it. I highly recommend it um, and we'll get back to using it some more. So until next time, we'll see. Wait a second. I think that's trademarked. Uh, goodbye.